Right folks, after a small break, we are back for some wedding pattern piece drafting. So the plan is, um, I have got the pattern pieces I originally worked from. I've got my dress from last time, which has got written all over it what I need to do to the pattern pieces. And we're gonna see how we go this evening, but the goal is to end up with my own pattern pieces with the adjustments made on them so I can start working from them, but they'll be on dot and cross paper so I don't damage the originals of my patterns. I know, I know, I'm actually doing it properly, guys. Um, so I am a bit TBC on whether to... I'm gonna have to make the adjustments as I draw them out. For some of them, that's gonna be really easy. For one of them, that's gonna be... For the train, that's gonna be interesting. But we, we, we will see. Um, but I am really excited to get going. Um, I'm a bit nervous, but... The next version will be made out of calico, which is gonna be great because it's a similar weight to my fabric as well. So goal one, pattern pieces. Goal two, put them together and see if it fits better with the adjustments made. So stay tuned, guys. Right, lads, so halfway through, we have the front of my dress. It's very, very long. Um, I may have cut the bodice too small now I look at it, but that's fine. I can, I've got my French curve. I can just add a couple of centimetres. I might add a centimetre on. I can always, obviously, I'll probably need to redraw it because the other thing I want to do is because I, my dress at the back has a train, I'm thinking to allow me to walk a little better because this dress wasn't originally drafted to be full length. I'm gonna slash and spread the bottom a little bit. And I'm gonna do that on this draft to see, I think it will give a better shape to the skirt. Like I'm not gonna do loads, just like just like a little bit, just to give it a little bit of volume. So I'm gonna do that. And then I've also drafted this piece here, which, so this is the, hold on, this is the original skirt back, which does fit really nicely. So I've just matched that up with the waist up there. And then as a result, I've drawn this piece here. So it should, if I hold it there, obviously seam allowance is drawn on, nearly forgot to do that. It should fill the gap, giving me a really nice slope. Um, that's gonna be done in lace, but for the calico version, I'm gonna do it in full calico just so I get a sense of like, if the shape is right, because it's really hard with tool to tell if the shape's right. And then what I will do on my next version that I'm going to make in like old satin I have, I'm going to pop to the shops and get some matching lace, just like half a metre, to test this out and see if it works. And then we can go from there. But I think, oh, I'm going to stop for dinner in a sec and then I'm going to try and get a draft of this dress really quickly sewn together tonight, really just to get a sense of whether this works. Because the thing is with testers, you just want to get them on and trying them on and like they're just long seams and there's no difficult techniques really for this so i'm going to get my pieces drawn out for the uh what's the other dress what's the other bit of my dress the back and the train and then we're going to see where we go from there Okay, folks, so my phone footage keeps corrupting, um, but sewing keep, has to keep happening. Luckily, this is a very long process. So we have the back of the skirt that's been cut out. Now, what I did on this one is I took 12 centimetres out of the length at the side, um, but I actually made the train broader and wider because I wanted a longer train. I thought the little sort of felt like a little bit of a teacup train. It was strange. So that is... The back piece which looks hilarious um but that long edge excuse me using my foot but that edge there is the edge that joins together and that is where the zip will be at the back there so just drawing on my darts a good, good, good girl making sure they're on there now i've cut out already the little back pieces and the straps so then i am on to 
the main dress now and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to put it together tomorrow. Um, I've already slashed and spread the bottom. It's not gone really well. Um, I know obviously this isn't how you're meant to do it. It's just because I want to have a play about with it on the fabric and then I'll tape it to where I actually want it. And we'll go from there. But otherwise this is going to get cut out now and then we'll put it together in the morning and try it on. Okay, folks, so it has, again, it has to be portrait because otherwise it won't fit the dress in. And the bedroom's a mess because the bed is, be um, what's wrong with the bed? The bed's broken. So, here we are. First things first, I've tried reinforcing half of my train with ribbon and it has worked. So I'm definitely going to get like some horsehair canvas or something um, or some braiding or, you know, just something. And I might pass a loop through it as well just to really keep some shape as it drags. But otherwise, I am delighted. I'm gonna walk away from you guys so you can see it. I'm delighted with the length of my train. I like that it's got a bit of swirl around it, but I also like that it's not as tight as the dresses in the shop. Now, I have made the bodice too small. I needed to size down last time from the sides. But what I think I actually need to do is, I need to add more volume across the front. So, cause currently it's not cowl necking, it's just sitting. So I want it to be a bit, there needs to be a bit more drape so that that cowl necks. And I need more coverage at the sides because I don't like that. So I want it to sit more like this. So I do need to take it back out a little, but I'm happier with the fit everywhere else. There are some drag lines, but I think they're mostly because the bust is wrong. So because I think they're mostly like the bust is pulling it out of shape. So it's making it wrong. But if I hold that sort of in place, the rest of it sits quite nicely. Also, it hasn't been ironed and it's calico. So I am gonna message a friend of mine about these drag lines across my hip because I don't know if it's because it's not sat on the waist properly. That's my waist, that's where it should be, but it's pulling up a little because obviously there isn't enough bust room. So that's where it should sit on my waist, nice and neatly there. And that's really nice, but I am getting some drag lines on my hips. And I think that means it's a little too tight. Now, what I have done is used a standard um, centimetre and a half seam allowance, but it might be it needs to be a centimetre. And I, or I just need to add a bit, because yeah, look at those, look at those drag lines up across my bum as well. I might need a little bit of them. Um, because again, I sized down on the whole dress because it was too loose last time. It was like moving around the body. So I think maybe if I add like a centimetre to each side, um, I made the skirt too long, so I just chopped a bit off. And now actually I'm really happy with that length because it's enough that you'll see my shoes. And my shoes are beautiful. Maybe you need to add, I did eyeball it, so I probably need to add like maybe two, three centimetres onto this. Just so it sort of drapes over my shoes because I obviously won't be flat footed. But I really like, like it now matches the train length perfectly, which is exactly what I want. And I do love how big my train is now. I'm a bit like, should it come out from the back in that line? But also I do quite like it, I feel a bit like a princess. Um, also, I drafted the triangular pieces. So they've gone quite well, I think, actually. Now, the flip side is, so I need to change the draft of the top, which means this sort of open section here, this bit, cuts down very low. So I kind of need this to go out to there. I'm not entirely, I think that means making this curve shallower, like that, I think. Um, so we'll see how we go. And then lifting the triangular piece up. So it's about there. Just so I get a more secure line. Um, I have bought some bra cups. And once I've got the line and the sizing of the dress better, what I'm gonna do is build a little top for underneath that will be part of the dress layer. So we'll have bra cups, cause it's gonna be November. Um, I don't wanna be cold. Um, or visibly so. So I'm going to have little bra cups and then some uh, like skin coloured mesh, which I'll put inside like a hidden bra shelf. And it'll be in there and it'll keep me sort of stable while I'm dancing and walking around and stuff. But we are much, much closer to where I want to be. My train is still just bunching together at the back, but I am noticing a difference on the side with the ribbon, like it is sort of dragging better. 
not dragging, I suppose following is the word. But I'm really happy with the size. Last time the train was a bit too titchy. Whereas this time I'm really happy having it sort of sort of dragging behind me. It feels more like a wedding dress because that's kind of the only time I'm really going to have a train. And I also really like that I can take a full stride in it. Um, because I did notice, just kick a toolbox, that's fine. Um, I did notice in the wedding dresses I tried on in the shop, I had to walk like this, which doesn't suit me in the slightest. So, ah, oh, this has definitely been a worthwhile version two. So I'm gonna go back to the drawing board now and redraft this bodice and have a little look at adding some, not room to the back, because I think the back fits nicely, but a little bit of tightness is a bit too much drag lines over the front so I think they need to be we need to add a little bit of extra fabric to get rid of those so it's not pulling so we'll add um I size down to a six so we'll size back to an eight I think um to get that little bit of space but only on the front I think the fit on the back is fine and I'm happy with that and I'm happy with how it goes considering again very rough and ready but I am making notes as well on seam finishes and how I want to do certain things, which is, you know, interesting because like they could go to there. The other thing is I am still thinking about it is I quite like a good day, good at good day in my um, in my train in the middle. So as I'm walking along sort of in the back, like a back quadrant. Oh, look at that. I've got a train, guys. I look like I'm in a wedding dress. This is so exciting. Um, and I'd quite like to do that, but I think that's really going to be a sort of last, last attempt, I think, right? not last attempt, but towards the end of the versions. Um, for people worrying about fabric usage, etc., I will cut this one up once the next one's made. Um, I'll cut this one up to trial different stuff on it and trial different techniques and everything, like none of the fabric will be wasted in that way. But because I can't take any volume out, I need to add we are going to be making a third version. I've ordered a lot of calico. Um, so version one, obviously crap acetate, fine. Version two is this one. We'll have another version, sort of 2.1 as it were, uh, version 2.5 in calico again, before we go anywhere near Dutch, Dutch of satin, because there are some definite fit issues here. So we're going to add I don't quite know where I, the problem is I think a lot of it's coming from the bust so if I make it a little bit bigger on the front just everywhere and then if it's bigger I can things I can take volume in if it's bigger but it's definitely pulling here but once it fits my bust more comfortably because it, it basically I need to add about a couple of centimeters each side make it broader um so once I've done that then it should lift nicer and sit where it's meant to sit because it is riding up and down but I do really like the fit at the back I think that's quite good but it's pulling I think because the front's too tight um but the actual back piece isn't pulling but it's, it's this it's, it's this fold here but we're getting there guys we're getting there I'm really happy with this I feel much more like a bride which is fun and it still feels achievable which is great so back to the drawing board, a bit more pattern drafting tonight. And then I'm going to start writing instructions and measuring pattern pieces and sort of creating like my own pattern as it were, because for me, at least I'll remember, I don't normally read instructions, but if I've written them myself, I will. Um, so that I remember what order to do stuff and like remember what works and what doesn't work. Um, but for now, let's go edit some pattern pieces. Okay, folks, so there might be a tiny bit of video between the last one and there also might not be, but here we are. So this is much, much closer to where we want to be. So a lot of the drag lines are gone. There are creases. And also I've lifted the straps a little bit. So again, it's pulling 
pulling on the back because obviously the strap adjustment isn't quite where I need it to be. And obviously this will all move down a little bit more. I say, obviously, this will move down a little bit more. So the dress waist just needs to be adjusted. So this bit needs to be lifted down to there. What happened was I remade the front, but I didn't remake the back. So that's fine. That's totally foreseeable. Train is the same as before. Um, but this is much closer. The other thing I've done is I've popped um, some modesty pads in because... I'm going to be building in some corsetry into my dress to keep everything in place. I've also had a significant shift in how I want to design. It's not significant, but it is. No, do you know what it is? It's not a significant design change. It's a significant construction change. So I'll talk through it more in a minute when I'm sat at my desk and Adam's not in the house because obviously he is in the house now and I don't want to talk through this in full detail because um, I need to sit at my desk and show you things. So there will be some panels here and here cut on the straight grain. So the top will be biased and the bottom will be biased and the train will be biased, but there'll be panels here and panels there on the straight grain just to, just to stop it drooping or anything, just to really shape the waist in a way that will make me feel really comfortable. Um, I'm also gonna add a pleat into the train back here because I feel like it just sort of comes out from my body if I stand like that just sort of comes out and I feel a bit like I've got a dinosaur tail and it's kind of hard to unsee. So I'm going to fold it in underneath wherever the zip stops. We're gonna bring it in so it's a closer line to my hips and then it will pleat out. I'm just gonna put a box pleat in because you know, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Um, and there's enough volume back there to do it easily actually without adjusting the pattern. So it really depends on final zip placement. So the next things to happen I have got modesty cups, mesh and boning because I'm going to create a little under bra, a little under corset almost, that will get trapped in this side, which is going to be two pieces. And then that will feed straight into the lining skirt. Now the lining skirt is the same shape as the front. Um, obviously it doesn't have the train, so it's just a straight skirt that goes underneath um, and hopefully makes it sit all nicely. Um, and I'm going to make sure there's a little bit more on the seam allowance on the sides to allow for a lining underneath as well. I need to take, I've pinned these with curvy grips, I need to take about an inch out of the straps, I think, maybe less. Just a little, just to support a bit more. But I'm really, really happy with how this has gone. Um, I've also extended the base of um, the cowl, so the bit we fold over, down to my waist. I'll bring it up a little but I quite like it there because it's going to be really, really helpful for building that corsetry and attaching to the lining. Um, I know how it's going to happen in my head. I'll need to explain that to you guys. The other thing I'm going to be doing is building a zip. Uh, what's the word? Is it placket or facing? I think it's probably facing. Um, but I thought of a really quite, I think, ingenious way to put my zip in the dress. And it involves, it's not going to involve a straight invisible zip. So as you can see currently, it's a lap zip. So what's gonna happen is there will be a lap zip inside and then there'll be another layer of fabric over the top, which will connect to the main dress and it will trap the rouleau loop elastic in it. And then I'll add the buttons. So basically you'll do up the buttons, but when you undo them, you'll open it and it will almost be like an extender with the zip inside. Now, I think that's gonna be more secure I also think it's going to provide a nicer finish and it means I can use a more robust zip. But I figured that out all on my own. Um, I've had lots of offers for help with my dress, which is very, very sweet. But I really want to do it on my own. I really want, even my mum is being great, actually. I'm just telling her what I'm doing. Um, she isn't telling me what to do, which is really nice. Um, not that I think she would, but she's very experienced. So I really appreciate her um, holding back a little and just letting me sort of figure it all out on my own. So yeah, version three is pretty good. I made sure to cut this one on the bias. That's the other reason there's a few more drag lines because obviously calico is a lot more structured than my fabric is. So it doesn't give in the same way on the bias. It's, it's still quite stiff. But I think you'll agree, the drag lines are much better than they were a minute ago. The fit on the top is nicer after the redraft. And again, that will drape, calico just doesn't drape, but that will drape really nicely. And it will be even better once you can't see my knickers through it. So I think that's really good. So I'm going to hand back to me in my chair 
to tell you all about next steps. And that I think will be it for this video. And then in video two, you can see construction and my first proper toile. I went and bought four meters of satin today um, in a like a sort of shell pearl pink. It's so pretty. And I'm gonna use that for my, my proper, I've got some Duchess satin as well, which I'm gonna use um, to test some construction techniques. But the pearl one is, that's gonna be my last proper toile before I make my actual dress. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really excited. So stay tuned. But in this video, we have gone from nothing to, to the fit of my dress. Um, I am gonna extend it at the front a little bit, but I, I chopped a bit off this time, literally, because I misaligned the pieces. Um, but that's fine, it is drafted to hit, to just skim the floor when I'm in my heels, because my heels aren't that high. Um, but yeah, so back, back to the chair. Okay, folks, so a slightly sneaky vlog because Adam is in the other room, um, but I want to share this with you. So, as I said, I'm redesigning my dress. Now, what I mean by that is, as I said, I really like the slinky cowl slip dress vibe, but A, it's a dress I've made loads before, B, with a zip and a train and everything, it really pulls on the bias and I don't think it gives me quite the silhouette I want. So I still need to bias cut, but I think, personally anyway, I think that I could achieve a nicer silhouette. Also, I've really gone off the idea of using lace at all in this dress. I really don't want to. Basically, I was sat on the sofa and I suddenly went, oh, I could design this differently. So. I have my crookie book from the Chanel exhibition that a good friend of mine bought me because I'm terrible at drawing people. And it's got like, I don't know if you can see that. You can't really, but it's got like dotted outline silhouettes of people um, that you can then draw around. And I was just sat on the sofa watching a film and I was just thinking about how I wanted my dress. And I was like, well, why don't I try and draw on my crookie book? And I drew it and I drew my dress. And I don't know how to explain it to you guys, but I drew it and I just went, that's it. That's my dress. That's what I want. So I'm going to show you the drawing. Uh, this side, ignore it, is just the underside. But this is my drawing of my dress. This is what we're going to end up with. Sorry, I'm just make sure I position the camera correctly. So I lean in. Uh, this is what I want. This right here. So the reasoning is this can still be ba uh, bias cut at the top, which is perfect. This skirt can still be bias cut. Dream, lovely. But having straight grain panels in the middle here will allow it to sort of cinch into my waist a bit more. Um, and it will have removed those drag lines I'm getting across my waist and hips that you guys can see. Um, and it will just help with the fit. Plus, having like these panels, they'll all be in satin. They're not gonna be like different colors. They're not gonna be like, they're gonna be the same satin. But having that as like detailing, I don't know, it really means quite a lot to me actually, because it feels like a more of a 1930s, 1940s dress and having those sat satin panels and having like the bias cut top and bottom, it also makes it so much easier to sew and to put the pieces out. I mean, it makes it more difficult in terms of fitting a bias into a straight grain there and getting like a nice corner, but in terms of actually cutting the pieces out in space on the fabric, it means I can cut my skirt and my top separately, so I'm not having to get one massive diagonal, which helps a lot, uh, particularly because I do have to do that for the back. So I want these panels, then I want them to connect to the panels on the back here, long straps, um, and then the pearl buttons down the back, or, or no, not pearl buttons, self cover buttons down the back. But I've really gone off the idea of having any kind of sparkle or lace. I want it to be really like, elegant and understated almost but having that detailing in the same satin just draws the eye and it hopefully will create a better fit so in the next vlog you're going to see me redraft all the pieces so i can create all of these sections because it's they're not going to be overlaid they're actually structural and there, as i've said there's a deliberate reason for that it is so that i can achieve a different fit so it's not bias cut the whole way down and hopefully it will free up some room in the bodice as well if that's a v shape i've got a bit more room to work with um but then it sort of pulls it in which is going to be great so the skirts are both still bias cut but these top sections then this will also be stripes of satin as well and the straps are going to come slightly more to the middle 
so that's the plan guys tune in for the next vlog to see a full redraft um i'm gonna be using the duchess satin because it's time i start working with satin um now that i'm comfortable with the draft at the top and the skirt and everything i don't really need to change it too much so it's time we start working with satin so tune in next time